long term rates of interest are so high. Even the banana republics, as they were known, have improved and their rates of interest, long term rates of interest, are not so high. A reduction of mere 1% augurs well for the industry, but it is not good enough. Another measure is for attracting foreign investment investors, foreign <coughs> institutional investors. And for that purpose, the finance minister has reduced the short-term capital gains tax from 65% to 30%. And as you are aware, in the last budget itself, the long-term capital gains tax was reduced to 10%. And the dividend income, etc., is to be taxed at 20%. Now, how does this compare with other countries which have opened up their economies? And whether this will be good enough for the foreign institutions who receive better tax treatment in other, other countries and there is also no set-off provided for the exchange loss they incur for the short-term gains or the long-term gains. And also, one wonders why the same facility is not given to NRIs or the overseas corporate bodies owned by the NRI when in fact these two categories can effectively contribute large investments both in primary and secondary markets. I would have wished that the benefits would have been also extended for the short-term capital gains tax to the NRIs. The estimate of $2 billion to be invested by the FIIs seems to be very optimistic, over-optimistic, since FIIs are known to take their own time to invest large sums. China, which opened up its economy and started its reform process way back in 79, started receiving investments of FII only in the late 1980s. We started our reforms in 85-86 with a break of nearly two years in 88-89. In so really speaking, we started our reforms only in the right earnest in 1991. So will FII invest large sums immediately? Therefore, is it wise to depend only on the FIIs? Why not NRIs and the NRI companies by giving equal tax? This is something that I think needs to be done. The budget proposals not so friendly to the market. Let us examine them. The absence of certain measures which ought to have been done along with the freeing of the uh, fully convertible currency and were expected rightly so by the market this year have not been done. So it is basically a positive budget in my opinion but it has not done something, it is not bold enough to introduce something that we expected naturally. The market, for example, expected removal of double taxation on dividend as recommended by Chalaya committee. However, what we find in the budget is section 80M has been amended, making intercorporate dividend on units of unit trust of India taxable in three years' time. This year, the benefit would be reduced to 80%, next year to 60%, thereafter nil. This has probably given wrong signals to the market and UTI in some estimates will have to repay over 5,000 crores in the next three years and with the result that UTI and other mutual funds whether they will be able to invest large sums that are demanded by both the primary market and the secondary market and also whether we can expect the FIIs and others to compensate for the primary capital market size going up from 10,000 crores to probably 20,000 crores in the next year and with the secondary market staying where it is with the index not moving up. Now even the banks and the other public sector companies are proposed to come in the market and they would raise large sums of money and with this kind of a scenario I thought a uniform concession to all mutual funds could have been given. As far as the double taxation on dividend is concerned this is one single measure which can prop up the market tremendously while costing the exchequer a barely rupees 150 crores. If the finance minister wants the market to revive, we should collectively urge him and I would urge the Bombay Shareholders Association to move the matter so that this can be introduced this year only. Second, not so market friendly measure is not granting either individual or corporate tax concession as promised in the last budget. Even the surcharge is not removed. 
on the income. However, he has carried forward the promise next year. Friends, in these days of uncertainty, can we hope for the same finance minister next year? Although one wishes that Sri Manmohan Singh, by act of parliament, is made finance minister for the next three years, regardless of change in the government. Third factor is that industry has not been granted exit policy. Again, an obvious requirement of a liberalized economic system. Perhaps political constraints are the reason for not introducing it this year. As far as the effect of various proposals on individual industries is concerned, I feel that while the long-term outlook is very bullish, the short-term outlook is, is, uh, is average except for export-oriented companies, which do not depend on imports to a great extent. Major beneficiaries of excise duty concession will be where recession has not hit hard. And the manufacturers, for example, for synthetic fiber in yarn, cosmetics, tea and coffee, where complete excise duty has been done away with, plastics, electrical machinery would benefit more than, let's say, consumer durables, motor vehicles, paints where recessionary trends will have to be reversed by price decreases. Cement, steel and tire industries will have to ride over the cost increases first and recessionary trend in their own, on their own and which may uh, be held even by the general revival following the economic revival. Perhaps companies with export potential in cement or tires will do better than others. The export-oriented industries like shipping, computer software, hotels, food and soya processing will be able to score handsome gains under full convertibility of the rupee and compensating the effect of duty reduction on the import components. My perception, friends, is that market behavior in the short run, that in the absence of additional soaps given to improve the liquidity in the market, which is the crucial factor, and because of the pressure of additional equity and high priced issues in the market, they are going unabated. The market will pick up only gradually towards the middle of 1993. If the rain goats are, are favorable and exports pick up, recessionary trends are reversed and corporate results improve, I expect the market to boom by the end of 1993. I expect the index to hover around 2200 to 2800 up to June 1993 and thereafter go up to as high as 4000 by the end of 1993. <laughs> when the full effect of the budget will be felt. However, if political uncertainty prevails and other factors are unfavorable, index may not touch 4000 and in fact it will come back to the present level. In view of the volatility of the market because of uncertainty factors, investors should exercise extreme caution in selecting companies where they can invest. Many primary market issues will give a good opportunity to invest and except for where, as I said, unjustifiably high premium are charged. As far as the secondary market is concerned, I think you should try to avoid the very high price shares unless they are backed with strong fundamentals. I would not like to name, I just asked for the permission of Dinesh Bhai because I have not taken any positions in any of these shares, believe me. But if you want to insist on the names, I could give a few names as an example. I do not mean that at the current price levels, they are necessarily a good buy. If you permit me, I will give you a few names. And they should not... Asha Brown Bowery, Tata T, ITC, Indian Hotels, Arvind Mills, ICICI, Shipping Credit. Writing it down. Are they writing? I don't think I have, I have any profit, sorry. Asha Brown Bowery, Tata T, ITC, Indian Hotels, Arvind Mills, ICICI, Shipping Credit. Probably Reliance Industries also, Tata Power and Colgate. These are the companies where I feel because of the very strong fundamentals, they will uh, not go down at least in the market value, if not go up. Among the low price shares, 
I would like to mention some of the names which some of you may not agree. Vinyl Chemicals is a low price share. Modi Cement, if there is a uh, boom in the cement. Gujarat Fuel Bonanza, PSI Data because they are going into software. Bombay Paints, Watsida Diesel, Digital Equipment which is in my opinion a low price share today. Even Oswal Agro and Ruchi Soya. In conclusion, I feel that this is a good budget and will prove to be benef beneficial in the development of our economy. And in turn, let us hope it helps the capital market, growth of the capital market. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your cheerful speech. Everybody is cheerful after your recommendations of particularly 4,000 in debt. <laughs> Those who were present last afternoon, last yesterday afternoon, they went very much disappointed and pessimistic. <laughs> As an opening guest, then you have really made the point. Friends, now we have other two speakers now available with us. One is Mr. E. Rai and Mr. Talaksi Gosar. Selection also is because we have applied a lot of thought and education of mind. How we have selected the speakers, I tell you also the very short. That we have taken a different segment of the capital market. We selected a few shareholders, then mutual funds, investment analysts, investment journalists, and one or two other sectors and thus we thought that we, it will give the, the whole picture that will emerge at the end of this talk will be a really a balanced picture of the future and the future of the market and the performance of the industries in the next coming one year. Now I will ask my colleague to introduce the next speaker, Mr. Raya. And in my life. I had introduced him first in 1986 in Lucknow when he had come as a chief guest in, to inaugurate a Chetna home for the mentally handicapped. Shri Bodhishwar Rai. <laughs> this shows how alert he is, how aware he is for the social responsibilities and the social banking cell of State Bank of India was very active and did a lot of support for the, all the charitable institutions. Now Shri Rai, is a managing director of the SBI Fund Management Limited. He's a BCom from the University of Delhi in 1954 and MA from the Delhi School of Economics in the year 1956. He is widely travelled and is a fellow of the Asian, De Asian Development Institute, Bangkok, and is also an associate of the International Management Institute, Geneva. He has joined SBI as a probationary officer in 1957. <laughs> He was the general manager of the bank's offshore banking unit at Bahrain and he was the chief general manager of Uttar Pradesh where I had met him last in Lucknow, UP. He is, he is the director of several boards of several state and private sector companies. We are indeed privileged to have, have him with us and of course he will throw a lot of light on what mutual funds think of the budget and how they will go with the strategy for the new year. Thank you very much. my friends on the podium and my friends on the board minister's side. It was so sweet of my friend to have been introduced in glowing terms. Two other assignments I've had, I mentioned myself. I was an officer of special duty in the Ministry of Finance after the banking for five years when the bank to best life. I was also Secretary of the Inquiry Committee in 1977, Central Bank's So, 
there are things in life outside the bank, outside the stock market, outside the finance and that <coughs> Ajit Bai has given an excellent and very distinct presentation of the budget. I think he has analyzed it very logically, cogently. Anyway, most of us have read what has been presented in the budget. I would uh, analyze things from a little different angle. I would say that the theme of the budget has been to integrate the Indian economy with the global economy. Two, three theme uh, points one can look at. That was the first theme. That is why all this emphasis on custom duty reduction, convertibility, is. The other was support to development elements. No budget can succeed, no finance minister can remain in the seat if he was only working for the financial and capital and so on. So, the other thing is rural employment. That's a major thrust of the theme of the budget. Education, energy, infrastructure. In these areas, developmental support has been hiked up by the finance minister. Above all, I think the theme of the budget has been to curb inflationary tendencies in the market. He has been working for it for the last three years, although he has not said it so clearly. But the point of fiscal deficits and so on, so all a pointer towards that. So these are the three basic themes of the budget. And before we pass judgment for them, let us see what are the thrusts that he has given in the budget to achieve these three objectives or themes. He is continuing with the fiscal correction. I think the way he has presented, prepared his budget, having worked with the finance ministry, it looks to me as if first he prepared a zero budget. No deficit whatsoever. Then he thought of how much concessions I have to give, and that will be the difference. You can see it's around 4,000. There are 4,000 other concessions, 4,000 is the, the same kind of figure, not exactly figure, in the neighborhood. So it's some kind of a zero budget, as they say, zero deficit budget, fully balanced budget prepared, then he has given these concessions. So fiscal uh, correction is continuing. The deficit has been brought down significantly. The figures are well known to you. The other thing is that he has worked on the development side, on the expenditure side. For two years, he was criticized for not boosting up expenditure. Cement industry said that we are stagnating because government expenditure is not coming up. People were complaining about less education facilities, nothing being done for infrastructure. So all this, as a result of this, I think his next thrust has been in increasing the development expenditure, figures are well known to you. Then of course we have our balance of payments problem, so the thrust on exports. Lot of industry, which is export oriented, is going to benefit from the various measures which has, he has announced and which were so succinctly summarized by my friend Ajit Ambani. Generally, then there has been an attempt at boosting industrial growth. The various concessions on excise duty, they are basically directed at that. We know the transport industry, whether it is cars or scooters or trucks, even tractors, they've been suffering. We have the, basically the other areas export and all. So, the boosting the industrial growth, something, something has been done with our usual textile, PMT, DT, all these things. So, but the idea was to boost the industrial growth. Then there has been some support to agriculture, although we were expecting something very clearly to come out, come out on uh, the the subsidies of fertilizers and so on, but I think he has avoided the budget, the controversial subject, 
properly, he deals with it separately because the agriculture ministry is very closely involved. And then tractor duties have been reduced so people can take to these new methods, new equipment. Then he has continued with his tax reforms. Although generally it would be said that he hasn't done much for direct taxes, but on the indirect taxes he has done quite a lot. Now, why he's not been able to do much for the direct taxes? Actually, you look at it from his side. Last year, he did a wholesale reform of the personal taxation system. He has, obviously, every year you cannot, it takes time for the government, even departments, to get used to certain figures and so on. We are all very clever, we pay, but there the machine is moving very slow. So he hasn't done much. So far as the capital taxation is concerned, although hopes were built up, but Chennai committee report came only in January. Government is a, like an elephant, moves very slow and uh, <laughs> takes time to study, takes time to a conclusion. So instead of doing half quick things, I think he has postponed it for next year. He's also given a promise. He's let the cat out of the bag. He said, next year I'll be doing something. I'm sure, although he had hoped to do it this year, he had said last year also, you might say, but the support came very late. I don't think it was available with him well in time. Now, these are the basic themes of the budget and thrust of the economic policies. Now, what are the implications of these for capital markets? Now, I would put them in uh, two forms. One is the quantitative aspect and the other is the quality. So far as the quantitative aspect is concerned, it has been well said, it is all being mentioned in the newspapers also. It is the qualitative aspect which is being ignored and which I think is very important of the investors as well. And therefore shareholders. Some of you may be the broker profession, you may not like it that way, but I think these are very important for all kinds of investors. This is an ongoing process. He budgets, I think, he has made certain qualitative statements in regard to the reforms in the capital markets. First year, you leave, the whole thing has percolated inside. But last two years, budget proposals contain a watchdog body to oversee the capital markets and players. This has been done. This year he says that SEBI will be given additional powers in light of experiences. Probably the market has not liked it. But the fact remains that we as investors like it. It's good for the investor that there is a body. In the beginning, in any situation, you have problems coming to settling with each other. They have problems with us, we have problems with them. But I think both of us have to live together, maybe as well as the investors, as well as the broking community. In a couple of years' time, one or two years' time, I think the whole dust will then will settle and things will be all right. We'll be appreciating each other's role. Certainly, stock markets have a very important role. So has SEBI at Because without regulation, we can be held as free, as is very evident from the pricing thing, how the things are being priced, totally unplanned. So we do need certain amount of either self-regulation or an outside regulation. But in this case, as the <coughs> world over, SEBI has been set up. Number of players in the capital market should be increased. He had said that. Now, in the last budget, they had introduced guidelines for operation of private sector mutual funds. Now these rules have been notified. Then several private mutual funds have been licensed. Financial institutions have been allowed to invest in the capital market, so therefore the number of players is going up. And therefore to that extent the capital market will be further strengthened. Trading and settlement period should take place with speed and transparency. This is what one of the objectives of the SEPI has to ensure this. This is happening. Proposals are also being considered for establishment of central depository, setting up a national stock exchange. Now at this stage it may look to us that it is not so good, but in the long run you will see how good it will be for the investor's market. Then inside the trader trading, rules have been formulated. Capital gains and wealth tax. Last year wealth tax on shares was withdrawn, of course it's a quantitative thing, 
but rules and regulations have now been notified to do with inside trading. I thought that nobody is going to mention these qualitative aspects and I am going to afford to take this opportunity that otherwise reforms in primary markets, CCA abolished, free pricing allowed, rules and regulations notified for operations of merchant bankers and all these things have taken place. We have to take note of them that these are qualitative points which go towards strengthening the capital market and we will see the, returns, the results in the long run. Now coming to other matters where, uh, you know, what are the, I will come to what are the market friendly proposals and what are the, because we have been asked to basically comment in our perception and what goes against. Full convertibility is certainly a market friendly proposal. Low rate of tax for short term capital gains for FFIs, change in excise duties, commercial rates and SLR requirements lower. <coughs> then impacts on individual industry, these are definitely long run in the capital market, they are helpful to the capital market, they will benefit exporters, hotels, shipping, automobiles, consumer durables, sponge iron I feel so because the duty of staff has been raised downstream petrochemical industries and aluminium. I think these are the industries which are going to benefit. Now the question that really has been really bothering you, bothering us also, and from where I think the, my real presentation begins, because till now it was only summarizing the position, that stock market is supposed to be the barometer of all economic activity other than perhaps agriculture directly because there are no shares but indirectly agriculture also because that has an impact on the industry, the demand, supply of raw materials, everything. And still when such a everybody is saying that such a fine budget has come and stock markets chose to take those times, let us analyze the reasons for this as I see them. I personally feel that you see the stock market and the operate sector somehow do not have a very full understanding of each other. Stock markets feel that this international competition, the domestic industry may not be able to stand. Although we are making too much of you know convertibility as well as other reduction in customs duties. I'm sorry I was having cold, I've taken some Happens to bring my up to this situation. I am not talking as physically as one should be, but I show I did not miss it. Now, the domestic industry, why is it not considered to be good enough to feel uh, to bear the competition in the international markets? You see, firstly, the interest rates are brought very low, interest rates in this country is still very high. Secondly, we have to look for lower interest rates. I agree with uh, just buying the one percent going down is not enough. Generally, industry expects better. But question is that bank's profitability on one side, incentive to save on the other requires higher interest rates on deposits, and probably a spread has to be maintained. Then our industry is really not here to save wastages. Our exchange rate. Full convertibility may also make new projects more costly. If we have to even the, the amount that we pay as royalty, the amount that we pay to our foreign collaborators, all this is going to go up in rupees because it is paid in dollars. So probably I feel that the first reason I am trying to rationalize because I am not talking that the market has acted, reacted in this manner because probably it feels that the, our industry is really not yet fully prepared for globalization and one or two years of problems are going to arise. But the real reason which is generally being said is that many an expectation have been denied. There are no direct concessions. Particularly people are saying that the corporate uh, tax concession which was promised has not been given. I have casually mentioned that it takes time in the government to 
to really come to grips with any report and uh, come to conclusion and then uh, come up with its proposal. But another reason is, uh, I RFP, I pose a question to you, are we making too much of it? I just asked my other day in my office yesterday to let me have a list of companies out of our capital line or info the last week, the models which are paying corporate taxes. We find not even 20% companies that are paying, only 20% companies will be paying corporate taxes. So this is only a perception. You know the big names are not paying corporate taxes. You know very well. So hardly so why, why did the market, which consists of such knowledgeable people, think that corporate tax reduction or corporate tax um, um, reform is going to be such a big thing? Also, it has been said that, you see, the FFM is a choice. I give you a cross board concession in corporate taxes, or I give you concession in excise duty, plus I boost the demand. I'm sure the industry is going to plummet for the second alternative and then they say what corporate taxes is know most of them are not paying anyway and even if they have a reduction, first they have to earn. It's better to earn more and then pay something rather than uh, make a fetish of it. Another thing has been said that no benefit has come to certain industries like cement. My colleague and old friend from the bank Mr. Vakum, he said his first reaction was nothing for the housing sector in the newspaper, he said. I was looking at it, really these two things, what did he do last time and was there any scope for doing anything this year? Now, Simen, you know, the, it carries the excise duty not at Valoru, but on part and basis. Last year, he had increased, yes, increased the excise duty from 215 rupees to 290 per ton. He had also raised excise duty on cement produced by mini plants from 90 to 165. Mind you, hit mini plants more last year than the big industry. Probably to have the big industry. Now, last year the prices were about 2,900, 2,400, 2,500 per ton. This year prices are 2,100, 2,200. On this, an excise duty of 290 rupees is about 12 to 13 percent. If I cannot get 10 percent excise duty, I'll wind up the department. The item does not suit me. It is my expenditure to 10 percent expenditure is my collection charge. When we issue kurkis and so on, you know, we do it in the bank for small people, farmers and so on. The decimal are charges can they deduct 10 percent out of the amount realized as a collection charge. So the government collection charge is 10 percent. So if the annual of duty is less than 10 percent, unless he wants to subsidize, there's no point in having the tax. So I don't think you can look for lower excise duty even in the next few years to come. Not at all. If prices go up, this rate will go, and this rate will remain, or might even be raised. Then the white cement here reduced the excise duty because that's annual from 40 to 35 last year and bound the law. This year, two years, cement industry people that really minted money, building their walls and silver, so let them come with the rest of the country walls. As about housing, I went through last year's budget proposals. Following were fully exempted from excise duty, last year he said. These are following are fully exempted from excise duty, bricks and tiles. Lightweight concrete building blocks. This is last year's budget. Doors and windows made of plastic, iron and steel would be anyway don't pay any excise <coughs> or wooden doors. Then panel doors, you know those seat up or doors as you call them. Then the excise duty on prefabricated buildings reduced from 15% to 5%. That was last year's budget. Was there any scope for reducing duty on any housing housing. What was really required and which I think we should look for to is that housing in this country is extremely ill-organized. Look at Europe, America, which is a real industry, specifications are followed, the whole thing, the, 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 the societies are there, the, the, the housing societies which finance uh, 
uh, construction of buildings as well as give loans to individuals, those who want to buy. So what we really need is to recognize housing as an industry. Like, like last year, tourism, two years back, was recognized as an industry. So housing has to be an industry, housing or construction. I mean, you see, construction has to be recognized as an industry. Then certain concessions can come and one can look forward to both concessions and wholesome returns. Not merely concessions all the time and nothing wholesome. We know how problematic it is to deal with the construction industry. So, of course, I already commented on inadequate interest cut. I'm with you. I think maybe he'll do again something, but I have two hats. I'm in the bank. We have to have a certain spread, otherwise, we become uneconomical. But to my mind, the real reason why the market acted in this manner is that it is still not working on fundamentals. Two years we've been talking of fundamentals, but we've been working like a casino. I'm saying this with all responsibility. The time I think it will take slowly, slowly when we will move away from the casino mentality to real investment and working, pick up, picking up companies on fundamentals. Just because you pick up a company and say go for people and hope, that's one way of doing it. But basically I think it is this, still it will take time, maybe another one year, maybe another two years when we will be more on fundamentals. Time is coming. Now what will bring the fundamentals back? I think the most major step that has been taken in recent times is the spring of the price. And the way things are being priced, it is anybody, it's a nightmare. I do it every day, I handle these things every day. I can't find a single issue which is properly priced. They, they have some few formulas. The merchant bankers talked about those P ratios, this issue which we have learned from books, but in reality, we can't even sell a slip that we buy. It has no liquidity, it has no market, there are no purchases. It's all right to have a P ratio for a, a category slip or a well moving slip, not for everyone. So these things, I think it is going to boom in a way. A few years later, you will see the investor up country is not very accustomed to selling things in stock exchanges. If you tell him, how much earning will I be? I face it every day. If I don't declare a dividend one year, the amount of letters that I get, I am not skipped. I have postponed the dividend for valid reasons. I get letters from even ex-finance secretaries that we have not put your money with you so that you may not pay us. We want regular return. So, risk orientation is one thing. It is all right in Gujarat, Bombay, this area. But from our country, if you tell a person, if you want to make money, sell your share, he said, tomorrow you will tell me to sell my house and make money. That kind of mentality. You see, so things are going to be very difficult when those people who have picked up money at this time at exorbitant premiums, if they are not going to properly service, that, that there is going to be a backlash. I always say that the corporate sector might destroy the stock market, the way it is moving. I think time has come when as a shareholders association, as investors, I represent you, clearly, that we have to put these places, people in place. In fact, the joke in my office is our merchant banking subsidies from the 19th floor. I'm on the 19th floor. So people come to me, they say, sir, they have fixed the premium. I say, yes, I fixed the discount. So, so that's how it is. So I think that we are moving, but it will take time. Market has to mature. Now, a few questions were asked. I really cannot recommend any scripts to My duty uh, come in the way of it. But my general recommendation to the market would be that next four to six weeks, I expect a narrow band downward move, four to six weeks. After four, uh, the next four to six months, after about month, month and a half, I'm sure market will pick up. Then monsoon is a big sector, but I'm not seeing any high number immediately coming by the year. Those numbers would never come. The factors that motivated those numbers, we know, 
we all are the flow, we are not those, uh, any fundamental, so things will have to take time. We'll have 4,000, maybe two years, three years to work. गैदरिंग के सामने और इतनी बड़ी पर्सनालिटियों के बीच में मुझे आने का मौका दिया है उस दिनेश भाई मोदी का मैं दो बार दो बार आभार मानता हूं एक बार इधर लाने के लिए और दूसरी बार जब मैं कुछ नहीं था कोई मुझे जानता नहीं था तभी इनडायरेक्टली मुझे शेयर बाजार सिखाने के लिए वो बात क्यों हुई कि व्यापार में मेरा काम था इंग्लिश में से गुजराती में ट्रांसलेशन करने का <laughs> और हमारे एडिटर साहब बसानी दिनेश भाई का जो आर्टिकल आएगा वो पहले मुझे ही भेजेंगे वो, वो समझते थे कि ये छोकरे को अच्छा आता है तो एक बार दिनेश भाई ने एक बहुत बढ़िया इंटरेस्टिंग आर्टिकल डबल टॉप्स एंड डबल बॉटम्स के बारे में लिखा उसमें उसमें भाई मैं शेयर बाजार में डबल टॉप्स और डबल बॉटम होते हैं उसकी बात कर रहा हूं आप कुछ गलत समझ पा रहे हैं तो इन्होंने ये लिखा था कि वेन यू प्ले वेन यू आर प्लेइंग विद द टॉप्स डोंट फॉरगेट द बॉटम When you are fumbling for the bottoms, don't neglect the tops. तो मुझे पहली बार पता चला कि ये शेयर बाजार इतना रोमांटिक जगह है और इतने रोमांटिक हमारे दिनेश भाई भी हैं तो मैं धीरे धीरे ये डबल टॉप की बुक्स जितनी भी थी उतनी पढ़ने लगा और जिधर भी डबल टॉप दिखने लगा वहां से मैं सोचता था कि यहां मार्केट नीचे गिरेगा और आज भी वही थियरी के ऊपर आज चलता हूं फॉर एग्जाम्पल मार्केट 1985-86 में पहले छह हुआ सॉरी पांच सौ चौवन उसके बाद छह हुआ मैं बोला इधर डबल स्टॉप बनाए अभी गिरेगा और मैंने द डेली में हेडलाइन दिया था सेल 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 उसके सिवा और कोई इंडिकेशन मैंने नहीं लिखा था तो ये डबल टॉप और डबल बॉटम की थियोरी मैंने दिनेश भाई से सीखी है और आज आपके सामने मैं कुछ कहने के लिए काबिल हुआ हूं उसके लिए मेरे गुरु समाज दिनेश भाई को आपके सामने सबके सामने मैं रोज सीखा करता हूँ अभी हम बात करेंगे ये मेन जो टॉपिक है उसकी आपको तो आदत है हम साइड ट्रैक ही ज्यादा करते हैं तो हम भी वही आदत सीख गए हैं बाजार में जाते जाते किस तरह होता है अगला बजट जो आया कोई भी बोलेगा कि कितना बड़ा बढ़िया बजट था इतना इतनी तेजी आई सबको अच्छा लगा लेकिन मुझे ये बताएंगे कि किसने उसमें पाया आज इतना बढ़िया बजट आने के बाद आज हम सब लोग रो रहे हैं क्यों कैसे तो लोग बोलते थे कि माइक माइक ठीक है 
उसको उसका काम करने दो मुझे मेरा काम करने दो और आपको कुछ सुनना है तो सुनिए तो ये जो अगला बजट आया उसमें हम लोग जो चीज बहुत लंबे अरसे में करनी चाहिए उसको बहुत जल्दी करने लगे और हम किस तरह लोग लेते थे हम लोग शेयर लेते थे हर्षद भाई को पता है किस तरह लोग लेते थे शेयर एक दिन हर्षद भाई ओबराय शेरेटोन में लिफ्ट के सामने खड़े थे उतने में वो रामकृष्ण हेल ने फ्रॉम कर्नाटक उन्होंने देख लिया कि हर्षद भाई खड़े हैं तो सामने आके धोती ऊंचा करके करते हर्षद भाई के सामने आए ओ मिस्टर हर्षद मेहता आई नो यू आपके बहुत सारे फोटोग्राफ छपते हैं ओ हर्षद मेहता सही प्लीज करेक्ट मी इफ आई रॉन्ग हर्षद मेहता सही ओ यस मिस्टर रामकृष्ण हेगड़े हाउ आर यू इट्स वेरी फाइन आई एम वेरी फाइन हाउ इज कर्नाटक डूइंग तो आदत है पूछने का कोई भी कंपनी के कैसा अच्छा करती है क्या कहा कैसा क्या चलता है उनके उसके बिना तो ये शेयर लेते नहीं है तो ये रिसर्च जो इनके लहू में बनी थी उन्होंने पूछ लिया कैसे हाउ इज कर्नाटक डूइंग कर्नाटक इनका मतलब था कर्नाटक स्टेट क्योंकि वो भी बड़ा आदमी था कर्नाटक का तो इट इज डूइंग एक्सीडिंगली वेल अंडर गुंडूराव अभी मोहन सिंह ओबेरॉय एम एस ओबेरॉय जो मालिक हैं उनके वो जब शिमला में सर्विस करते थे उनके साथ एक गोरखा बच्चा लाए थे तो गोरखे बच्चे को अच्छी नौकरी भी दी थी क्योंकि साथ में उसका बाप और ये दोनों साथ में सर्विस करते थे वो गोरखा बच्चा लिफ्ट में से बाहर निकल रहा था उसमें सुना कुछ यहाँ टिक चल रही है ये कर्नाटक की बात हो रही है उसने पूछा भाई ये कर्नाटक नाम का कौन सा शहर है बाजार में तो बोलता है कर्नाटक के दो तीन है लेकिन कौन सा ज्यादा अच्छा लगता है बोलता है कर्नाटक का बॉलबेरी तो सीधा अपना शेर का शेर की कार लेके गया बाजार में अभी शेर की ओवर मोहन सिंह की कैसी कार होती है बहुत बड़ी कार होती है तो जिस ब्रोकर के पास जाके खड़ा हुआ तो ब्रोकर भी खड़ा हो गया ये तो कोई बड़ा साहब आया है बोला पांच हजार कर्नाटक वाला अरे कर्नाटक वो कर्नाटक है ना कर्नाटक का बॉलबेरी तो इसने पांच हजार लिया अठारह वाला पच्चीस फिर सुना किसी ने कि ये कोई बड़ा आदमी इधर शेयर खरीदने के अलावा आया है तो ये किधर से टिप लाया डायरेक्ट फ्रॉम हर्षद मेहता डायरेक्ट टिप फ्रॉम हर्षद मेहता बोला कहां से सुना बोला हमारे लिफ्ट में वो बात कर रहे थे हमने सुन लिया तो इस तरह हम शेयर खरीदते थे अठारह वाला एक बना दिया और अभी फिर वापस वहीं पर हैं हम सम हम, हम सब के पास वही शेयर पड़े हुए हैं सब इसमें ये हर्षद मेहता ने नहीं दी थी दी थी लिफ्ट हम खुद ने ली थी उनके पास से हमारे पास एक ड्राइवर आया था वो भी यही बात करता था कि मेरा बच्चा अशोक मेहता की स्कूल में हमने दाखिल करवाया है तो उसके बच्चे की स्कूल में क्यों बोला तो उसकी टिप डायरेक्ट मिलेगी तो इस तरह हमने शेयर दिया क्यों कि बाजार उस तरह भागता था हमको लगता था कि आज नहीं लेंगे तो कब को चांस गया तो साहब ये मोहन अपने डॉक्टर साहब जो है रियल डॉक्टर है बोले ये दर्द का तो इलाज करना पड़ेगा तो बोले ये लोग अगर फंस जाते हैं इतना तेजी वाला बजट दिया इससे अच्छा है कि थोड़ा मंदी का बजट दे दे रहे हैं तो लोग कुछ समझ के लेंगे सोच के लेंगे और सब एक बात मैं आपको बताता हूं कि तेजी के पीरियड में हर एक चीज उसकी वैल्यू के ऊपर बिकती है और मंदी के पीरियड में हर एक चीज उसकी वैल्यू रियल वैल्यू नहीं तो उसके भी नीचे बिकती है तो अब अब सही समय है कि रियल वैल्यू के नीचे जो शेयर बिकते हैं और अच्छा पोटेंशियल जिसमें है वो, वो हम खरीद के छ महीना भी रखेंगे तो मैं समझता हूं कि उस, उसमें अच्छा चांस मिलेगा सर जिस तो, जिस समय बड़ी तेजी में हम शेयर खरीद रहे थे उस समय हम समझते थे कि आज लिया और कल बढ़ेगा 
और क्या हो गया कि अप्रैल से लिया और आज तक 11 महीना हो गया वही शेयर हमारे पास पड़े हुए हैं जो शेयर हमने दो दिन में बेचने के लिए लिया था और जिसको बोलते हैं कि निरुपाय हमें शेयर होल्डर बना पड़ा हुआ है और वो भाव जिस भाव से हमने लिया है वो भाव तो अभी भी नहीं आया तो उससे अच्छा है कि ये अपनी मर्जी के बिना कोई लोग हमें शेयर होल्डर बनने की ये कंपलसन दें उससे अच्छा है कि हम खुद समझ के अच्छे शेयर अपने दिमाग से सोच के इस मंदी के टाइम में सोचना अच्छा लगता है कि भाई कोई भी चीज ओवर वैल्यूड नहीं है कोई भी चीज एग्जेगरेटेड नहीं है तो मैं समझता हूं कि यही तरीका है मंदी के पीरियड में अच्छे शेयरों की जांच करना तलाश करना अभी थोड़ा सा बजट के ऊपर मैं बोल दूंगा सिर्फ इतना ही बोलूंगा क्योंकि बड़े बड़े लोग बड़ी बड़ी बातें करते हैं मुझे तो वो आती नहीं है तो मैं इतना बोलूंगा कि ये बजट जो है ये बजट इन्वेस्टर फ्रेंडली बजट है ये बजट जो है इंडस्ट्री फ्रेंडली बजट है और ये बजट जो है कंज्यूमर फ्रेंडली बजट है जब कोई भी चीज का भाव बढ़ता है कोई भी चीज की जकात बढ़ती है एक्साइज बढ़ती है तो लोग गुमा गुम करते हैं कि भाई ये जकात होती गई है नीचे करो अभी मनमोहन सिंह साहब ने तो बिना बोले जकात कम कर दिया है उससे भी बढ़िया और क्या चाहिए इंडस्ट्री को बोलिए अगर इंडस्ट्री को जकात कम करने से या एक्साइज कम करने से फायदा होता होगा तो वो फायदा इंडस्ट्री के लिए आगे चलकर बहुत बढ़िया फायदा होगा और दूसरी बात बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट चीज ये है कि इन्होंने इनको चाहिए कि जो फॉरेन के इन्वेस्टर हैं वो भी इंडिया में आवे और हमने उनको इतने भाव ऊंचे करके रखे के रखे थे कि उनके लिए दरवाजा ही खुला नहीं छोड़ा था तो फॉरेन के कोई इन्वेस्टर आए नहीं सबकी नजर यहां लगी हुई थी एक चीन के ऊपर एक इंडिया के ऊपर एक पाकिस्तान के ऊपर तो चीन वाले जीत गए इंडिया वाले नहीं जीते क्योंकि चीन में कोई शहर ही नहीं था शहर तो हमारे पास था तो चीन में अभी अभी लोग स्टॉक एक्सचेंज शुरू करते हैं और क्या हो गया मालूम है एक कंपनी के फॉर्म बिग मतलब फॉर्म आए थे वो पांच पांच उधर का रुपया जो भी हो गया मुझे पता नहीं तो उसमें बिक रहे थे उसमें आठ लाख लोग आठ लाख लोगों की लाइन लग गई थी उसमें उल्लड़ हो गए उसमें कितने लोग मारे गए सब इतना अगर शेयर बाजार के लिए क्रेज चाइना में है तो हम लोग तो थोड़ा सा तो जानते ही है कि शेयर बाजार क्या है बाकी हमने लास्ट ईयर सीख लिया हमने ये सीखा तो ये सरदार जी ने जो किया है सरदार जी ने जो किया है पहले उन्होंने शेयर बाजार में लाने के लिए तेजी वाला बजट किया और कोई भी आदमी अगर बोलेंगे कि भाई ये मंदी मार्केट में जाओ ये शेयर खरीदो बोलेगा नहीं पा वहां तो भाव गिरता है मार लगता है तो कोई नहीं लेता है तो वो हर एक लोग ड्राइवर होगा ये जो फोटोग्राफर होंगे ये जर्नलिस्ट होंगे पान वाले होंगे सब लोग तभी ही एंट्री लेते हैं जब बाजार में हर रोज भाव बढ़ते हैं फट 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 और फटाफट जो भाव बढ़ते हैं उसमें आते हैं मार खाते हैं और बाद में सीखते हैं यही तरीका है सीखने का उसके, उसके सिवा और कोई तरीका नहीं है जब बच्चा बिल्कुल चलने के लिए सीखता है तो पहले गिरता ही है मुझे बताइए कौन नहीं गिरा यहां पर हर एक आदमी गिरा है और अगर सरदार जी ने यह सोचा कि पहले लोगों को अगर जमा करो बाद में सिखाओ तो अगले साल उन्होंने जमा किया सिखाया देखो अगले साल फिर जमा करेंगे अगले साल ऐसा ही तेजी का बजट देंगे जो तेजी का बजट हमें इस साल आने की जरूरत थी चाहते थे कि आएगा बजट वो कॉर्पोरेट टैक्स वाली बात कर रहा हूं मैं जो चीज अबेयस में रखी है वो कभी भी आएगी तो इन्होंने गारंटी कर ली कि अगले साल तो गारंटी तेजी होगी और बाजार का तो रूल है कि कंपनी नुकसान में से थोड़ा सा नफा बताए बोनस तो तीन साल के बाद आएगा तो नुकसान में से नफा करने का शुरू करे कंपनी वहीं से हम शेयर लेना शुरू कर, करते हैं तो अगला बजट गारंटीड तेजी वाला आने वाला है ये अभी मालूम हो गया है क्योंकि इन्होंने बताया है कि ये टाइम कॉर्पोरेट टैक्स में नहीं कम करूंगा तो इसका मतलब ये हुआ कि अगले टाइम तो करेंगे ही 
तो ये जो तेजी होगी तभी होगी वो बात में बात करूंगा मैं ये जो तेजी होगी वो अगले साल के पार करके जाएगी अगले साल भी जो बजट आएगा उसमें आपको घबरने की जरूरत नहीं है और खास करके मैं बताता हूं ये टाइम में जो मंदी आई है अभी बजट के बाद उसमें कुछ अनयूजल हो रहा है अनयूजल क्यों हो रहा है कि बजट के बाद हर एक चीज का भाव घटा है जिस कंपनी को बढ़िया से बढ़िया फायदा होता है उसी का भी घटा है जिसका खराब भी हुआ है उसका भी घटा है दिस इज समिंग वेरी अनयूजल अननेचुरल अननेचुरल चीजें ज्यादा नहीं चलती है आपको मालूम है अननेचुरल चीजें ज्यादा नहीं चलती है पंद्रह दिन महीना दो महीना बाद में अपने मेरिट के ऊपर चलती है तो ये बताइए कि ऐसा था बजट कि हर एक चीज हर एक कंपनी को खराब हुए ये बजट में नहीं थोड़ी सी कंपनियां हम बताएंगे तो ये जो बजट आया उसमें जो रिएक्शन है वो रिएक्शन क्या है मैं बताता हूं कि लोग समझते थे कि बहुत बढ़िया बजट आएगा और जैसे बात हुई थी कॉर्पोरेट टैक्स जाएगा इंडिविजुअल टैक्स की थ्री लिमिट बढ़ेगी ये सब बातें हुई थी इसके लिए और अगले ही दिन हर एक पेपर में हेडलाइन भी आई थी कि इंडिविजुअल टैक्स लिमिट विल गो अप थ्री टैक्स लिमिट कॉर्पोरेट टैक्स विल बी स्लैश ऐसा तो लोग और भी जोर से ले गए थे अभी बाजार में हर एक टाइम पर थोड़े ऐसे लोग रहते हैं जो इस पार या उस पार वाली बात करते हैं उन्होंने इस पार या उस पार के हिसाब से अपनी गुंजाइश के ऊपर शेयर ले लिया और बाकी जो थे जो अप्रैल से फंसे हुए थे और अब तक छोड़ते नहीं थे उनके लिए तो ये लास्ट रिसोर्ट था ये समझते थे कि अभी कुछ नहीं तो चांस आएगा छूटने का तो ये जो बजट आया उसमें गिरना शुरू हुआ उन्होंने लास्ट चांस भी छोड़ के बोला अभी तो बाजार नहीं चलेगा इसके लिए जो सैनिक प्रेशर दो चार दिन में आया मैं समझता हूं कि और दो चार दिन में खत्म हो जाएगा और मैं ये नहीं चाहता हूं कि दो चार दिन के बाद जो सैनिक प्रेशर खत्म हो जाएगा और बाजार फिर फटाफट ऊपर जाने लगेगा ऊपर जाएगा नीचे जाएगा ऊपर जाएगा वैसे करते छ आठ महीना निकालना है ये जुलाई तक तो बहुत बढ़िया मैं समझता हूं कि बाजार का ऐसा जबरदस्त सॉलिड न्यू बन जाएगा कि जुलाई में बारिश आएगी बुक बम के बदले हो गए होंगे नो डिलीवरी पीरियड शुरू हो गया होगा और वहां से हम शेयर खरीदना भी शुरू करेंगे मुझे सिर्फ इतना कहना है कि इस बजट में सिर्फ दो चीजें आप अच्छी ढूंढ के निकालो और त्राटक विद्या उसके ऊपर शुरू करो अभी ये बोलेंगे कि त्राटक विद्या क्या है तो मैं समझता हूं कि मैंने पहले बहुत दफे बताई है कई लोग नए फंसे हुए हैं उनके लिए भी बताना जरूरी है तो बता देता हूं मैं एक बार सूरत गया था लेक्चर देने के लिए बड़ोड़ा का एक आदमी आके खड़ा हुआ और लेक्चर का टाइम हो रहा था पांच मिनट कम थी लॉबी में आके खड़ा हो गया साथ मैं बोला बोलिए रिलायंस में क्या लगता है 1985 की बात है 340 का भाव था तीन नहीं हुआ था मैं बोला रिलायंस अच्छा लगता है नहीं बोनस क्या रेशियो में आएगा बोनस तो मुझे पता नहीं मैंने धीरूभाई से अब तक बात कुछ की नहीं है तो बोलता है नहीं नहीं मुझे जरा खास बताओ कि इसमें क्या लगता है अभी मेरी एक आदत है कि कोई भी आदमी सलाह पूछेगा एडवाइस लेगा तो मैं पहले उससे ये सवाल करूंगा कि भाई तेरे पास कितने शेयर हैं वो तो बोलेगा सौ शेयर हैं तो मैं बोलूंगा पचास रखो पचास बेचो उसको फायदे के लिए नहीं मेरी सलामती के लिए सिंपल है अगर मेरे उसके कहने के बाद कि भाई पचास से बेचो भाव बढ़ गया तो मैं बोलूंगा कि देखो तुम्हारे पास पचास रखवाया ना हमने भाव गिर गया तो मैं बोलूंगा देखो पचास तो बिकवा दिया ना तो मैंने बोला कि भाई तेरे पास कितने शेयर हैं वो आदमी मुंह का नाम मेरी नहीं पास देता था मतलब अपने पास कितनी क्वान्टिटी है पता नहीं रहा था तो मैं बोला देख जब तक तुम जवाब नहीं दोगे कितने शेयर हैं तो मैं तुझे सही सलाह नहीं दे पाऊंगा और टाइम हो गया साथ मेरी 
हाथ पकड़ के बोले सर अभी चलो मीटिंग का टाइम हो रहा है उधर पब्लिक वेट कर रही है तो इसने समझा कि अभी ये तो जा रहा है हाथ से जाएगा तो लास्ट में उसने बोल दिया पीछे से सब सिर्फ चालीस हजार शेयर हैं मैंने जगके से हाथ छुड़ाया कन्वीनर से मैं उसके सामने खड़ा हो गया सर ये बताइए कि आप ऐसे ये चालीस हजार शेयर इकट्ठे कैसे किए जाते हैं तो ये आदमी ने बताया अपना सीक्रेट बताया ये आदमी ने सीक्रेट बताया सब देखो 1977 में इसका इश्यू आया सब लोग बोलते थे ये ये हो जाएगा वो हो जाएगा आपको मालूम है क्या बोलते थे लोग तो मैंने एक दिल, दिल में एक ऐसा घुस गया मेरे मन में कि ये शेयर में कुछ होने वाला है और मैं कभी पहले शेयर बाजार में गया नहीं था सौ लिया दो सौ लिया चार सौ लिया धीरे धीरे जो भी पैसा आता गया मैं उसी में शेयर लेते गया उसी का शेयर बोला और कोई चीज बोला नहीं कोई भी नहीं है एक चीज सिर्फ रिलायंस फिर हमने कैलकुलेटर निकाला उसको कैलकुलेशन करके बताया कि भाई तुम तो एक करोड़ चालीस लाख पति हो गए हो सब बेच दो सब बेच के जो भी पैसा आएगा उसमें पैंसठ लाख सरकार को जाएगा बाकी पैंसठ लाख बचेगा उसमें पंद्रह लाख तुम इधर उधर घूम के आओ यूरोप अमेरिका जो भी है पचास लाख ब्याज बदले में डाल दो और ब्याज बदले में जो हर महीने पैसा आएगा उसमें से फिर लेते जाओ मैं समझा कि मैंने बहुत बढ़िया एडवाइस दे दिया है पहली बार हमने हंड्रेड परसेंट सेल करने का सिग्नल दिया था अगर कोई आदमी को दिया था तो नहीं तो फिफ्टी फिफ्टी ही रहता है जिस तरह हमारी टिप होती है फिफ्टी फिफ्टी मैं समझा इस आदमी ने तो बराबर दिमाग में उतार लिया और मैं गया पीछे से आवाज सुनाई दिया साहब आपने ये नहीं बताया कि बोनस क्या रेशियो में आएगा <laughs> लेकिन एक बात उस आदमी से मैंने जो समझा है ये त्राटक विद्या है बाजार में पांच हजार चीजें लिस्टेड होने वाली आप कितनी लेंगे कितनी कितनी चीजों का अभ्यास करेंगे कोई पांच चीज सिर्फ दूध निकालो पांच में से एक बेस्ट सिलेक्ट करो और उसके ऊपर आप कॉन्सेंट्रेट करो आपको यह बाजार की तेजी मंदी कुछ नहीं लगेगी आप कोई फिक्र करने की जरूरत नहीं है अगर आप खरीदना चाहते हैं तो एक बेस्ट चीज आप मैं बोलता हूं आज बोल दू सब इंडेक्स बेस्ट चीज नहीं है अच्छा एक बहुत बढ़िया सवाल आपने किया कि इंडेक्स की बात की है अभी जो पीरियड आया है अभी उसमें इंडेक्स भूल जाओ इंडेक्स नहीं बढ़ेगा तो भी मेरिट वाली कंपनियां बढ़ेगी अभी मेरिट और इंडेक्स दोनों जुदा हो गए हैं अभी मेरिट और इंडेक्स दोनों जुदा हो गए हैं ये बजट आया सत्ताईस फेब्रुआरी तब तक इंडेक्स और मेरिट और डिमेरिट वॉट एवर यू कॉल इट दे आर कनेक्टेड विथ ईच अदर बट नाउ दिस इज अ बजट विच विल बी फोर्सिंग द प्राइस इज अप और डाउन ऑन द मेरिट्स एंड डिमेरिट्स ऑफ द कंपनी एंड ऑल्सो ऑन द मेरिट्स एंड डिमेरिट्स ऑफ द इंडस्ट्री सो इंडेक्स को भूल जा मैं दस हजार बोल दूंगा तो आप तालियां बजाएंगे मुझे पता है और फिर भी ये भी बताऊंगा कि इंडेक्स कहां तक नीचे जाएगा ज्यादा से ज्यादा पंद्रह दिन में अगर तेईस सौ उनसाठ के नीचे नहीं गया तो अजीत भाई ने जो बताया चार हजार का इंडेक्स धीरे धीरे आएगा और खास करके मुझे आप बताइए परमिशन टाइम का जो है ये सरदार जी जो है उन्होंने उन्होंने बहुत बढ़िया गेम खेला है वो पॉलिटिशियन नहीं थे लेकिन अभी बनना पड़ा है क्यों कि उधर जयललिता जी नरसिंह राव को तकलीफ दे रहे हैं इधर इधर बीजेपी बीजेपी से तकलीफ हो रही है अभी लोगों को डाउट है कि ये बजट पास होगा या नहीं कल तक तो ऐसा लगता था कि ये बजट पास नहीं होवे तो ही अच्छा है ये बजट पास नहीं होवे तो ही अच्छा है क्योंकि शेयर के भाव गिर रहे थे लेकिन आज सुबह में किसी ने बताया कि भाव थोड़े ऊंचे हो गए हैं तो ये बजट पास नहीं होगा ये भी एक डर है और डर कैसे निकलेगा मैं बताता हूं कि सरदार जी जब फाइनल रीडिंग करेंगे बजट का तब इतनी जो डिमांड हमने की है मैं समझता हूं कि शायद ये कॉर्पोरेट टैक्स वाली बात आ जाएगी 
अगर नहीं भी आई तो अगले साल जरूर देंगे और वो कौनी भी करेंगे और खास करके वो जो फ्री टैक्स फ्री टैक्स लिमिट जो है वो तो मैं समझता हूं जरूर बढ़ाएंगे एक दो हजार से तीन चार हजार से बढ़ाएंगे जितना आप नीचे गिराओ मार्केट उतना वो ज्यादा बढ़ाएंगे तो ये मार्च महीने में आप बाजार को ऊंचा उठाने की कोशिश ही नहीं करना भले पांच मंगलवार हो महीने में पांच मंगलवार है और पांच मंगलवार के महीने में कभी मंदी हुई नहीं है फिर भी ये मंदी जो हम कर रहे हैं जान बुझ कर कर रहे हैं करनी भी चाहिए अगर पाना है तो पहले एक जमाना था यूनियन वाले डिमांड करते थे तीन हजार का पगार बढ़ाओ उनको पता था कि तीन हजार क्या तीन सौ भी नहीं बढ़ेगा तीन हजार का पगार बढ़ाने का डिमांड करने के लिए मोर्चा निकालते थे और मोर्चा निकालने के बाद पंद्रह दिन कम काम बंद करने के बाद तीन सौ रुपया बढ़ता था खुश होते थे समझते थे कि डेढ़ सौ के भी काबिल नहीं है हम लोग तीन सौ को बड़ा तो बाजार को अगर पंद्रह दिन महीना दिन ऊंचा उठाया तो ये समझना कि कुछ नहीं आएगा इसके लिए तेजी की उम्मीद मत रखना सिर्फ इतना करना कि अपने जो शेयर है वो समाज के रख लेना एक भी शेयर बेचने के लिए अगर एक ही एक भी आदमी नहीं निकालेगा तो मैं देखता हूं क्या करते हैं वो मंदिर वाले मंदिर तो हम खुद कर रहे हैं हम खुद घबरा कर मंदिर कर रहे हैं मंदिर का कोई कारण नहीं है तो मैं एक बात आपको बताता हूं कि ये महीना जब हो जाएगा तब तो जूनी बातें हम वैसे भी भूल जाते हैं दुख कम हो जाता है और बाद में ये मंदी अपने कोटे हो जाएगी और फिर नया ढूंढेंगे कौन सी टिप कहां से निकल रही है तो सब घबराना नहीं ये बाजार का भविष्य बहुत उजला है ये इंडिया का भविष्य उजला है और इतने सारे लोग बॉम्बे शेयर होल्डर एसोसिएशन के मेजे के अंदर पहली बार आए हैं मैं समझता हूं कि बॉम्बे स्टॉक एक्सचेंज में आने वाले सालों तक तेजी बनी रहेगी और मैं यही चाहता हूं कि हर कंपनी बस यहां पर तकलीफ शुरू होती है ये तक, तकलीफ का जो मेन कारण है यहां से शुरू होता है आपको चाहिए तो मैं देता हूं मैं समझ कुछ भाई पॉइंट भूल गया हूं तो एक आदमी अगर बोलेगा और परमिशन देंगे दिनेश भाई तो मैं बोलूंगा 50-50 अच्छा आपके पास है वो मत बताओ नहीं मेरे पास कुछ नहीं है इसमें से हमने तो एप्रिल में बेच दिया था सब सर फाइनेंशियल सर्विस फाइनेंशियल जो सर्विसेज बोलते हैं वो कंपनियां बहुत बढ़िया चलेगी आने वाले पांच साल तक उसमें कोटक महिंद्रा बेस्ट उसमें अल्पिक केमिकल लीजिए और दो चार नाम आप आजू बाजू में पूछ लीजिए बहुत फेमस चीजें हैं फेरा शेर जो अभी बड़े नहीं है और बढ़ने की पूरी गुंजाइश रखते हैं वो अगले साल का जब बजट आएगा 5 परसेंट या 10 परसेंट कॉर्पोरेट टैक्स कम होगा तो सबसे बढ़िया अगर बेनिफिट जाएगा तो फेरा शेयरों के लिए है एक साल तक आप संभालने की गुंजाइश रखते हैं तो फेरा शेयर जरूर लीजिए भाई फेरा शेयर जो अच्छे हैं अभी फेरा शेयर में भी कौन से कौन से अच्छे हैं वो नहीं जानते हैं आप तो ये तो भाई बहुत कमी की बात है फिर भी मैं आपको एक ऐसी चीज देता हूं कि जो इस बाजार में इतने खराब मार्केट में भी घटी नहीं है बढ़ बर, के बंद रही है पॉन्स इंडिया आपको तो मालूम है वो क्या बनाती है पाउडर टेलकम पाउडर ये जो अभी इसका डिमांड तो कभी गिरने वाला ही नहीं है इंडिया में वो डिमांड तो कभी गिरता ही नहीं है बढ़ता ही है ये पाउडर पाउडर की बात करता हूं सब मैं जितनी दफे बाहर गए पाउडर लगाया तो ये पॉन्स का जो शेयर है 
टेक्निकली बहुत स्ट्रॉन्ग लगता है अभी फंडामेंटली आप दूसरों से पूछ लेना इस खराब बाजार में भी गिरा नहीं 500 सौ बंद हुआ था बजट के दिन बजट के बाद जब मार्केट खुला तो 650 सौ पचास होकर पांच बंद आया है 590, 590 बंद आया है ये एक पहला उसको बजट में भी फायदा है गवर्नमेंट अरे सरदार जी ने रिडक्शन किया है एक्साइज का दूसरी बढ़िया चीज है सीमेंट्स सीमेंट्स का शेयर भी इस खराब मार्केट में बहुत स्ट्रॉन्ग इंडिकेशन दे रहा है ये जो सीमेंट के शेयर हैं अभी लोग जितना भी मंदी बोले आप खुश होना आपको नीचे भाव में खरीदने का अच्छा चांस मिलेगा तेजी के दो कारण होंगे एक तो 32 परसेंट प्लान आउटले जो बढ़ाया है उसमें सबसे बड़ा फायदा होगा तो सीमेंट के कंपनियों को होगा और कन्वर्टिबिलिटी के हिसाब से अगले साल भी अगर अपनी सीमेंट एक्सपोर्ट हो सकी थी ये साल 50-60 लाख टन अगर सीमेंट एक्सपोर्ट हो गई तो मैं समझता हूं कि सीमेंट के शेयरों में भी बड़ी तेजी आएगी अभी नहीं थोड़े टाइम के बाद और शुगर शेयरों के लिए भावी बहुत अच्छा है उसमें बनारी अमान है पोनी शुगर है अरुणा शुगर है ग्रेनाइट एक्सपोर्टिंग कंपनियों में से स्पेसिफिक ग्रेनाइट जसवाल ग्रेनाइट और दो चार नाम अच्छे आप ढूंढ लेना थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू
we are talking about integrating India, we are talking about transparency, we are talking about this regulation, that regulation. But where is the level playing field in the stock exchange? And the level playing field is not there and there is a comparison. Of course, I have not prepared myself to speak to you. It has come as a surprise. But this, these were the notes I was just exchanging with Harshad in the afternoon. सबसे पहले बात तो मैंने जब आपको कहा कि आप कुंकरण हैं, मैं ये कहना चाहूँगा कि आप अनाज भी हैं। Because your two lakh crores have been liquidated in less than 18 months at a time when this country is going through historic moments and seeing three extraordinarily good budgets. And yet we are justifying जब 800 से 1600 index हुई थी, और कई लोगों ने कहा था कि ये 1600 index गलत है। And why in another 12 months today we are all forecasting that even 2400 is a bottom? Okay, you may not have the justification for 4537 index recorded on 2nd April. Who did it and how did it is another matter. Every time, every move of the market, there are some self-prophesizing people who say this is right level, this is wrong level. Levels are made by all of us, more particularly by the sentiment. When I say fundamental plus sentiment, that sentiment has to be understood. And who makes it? And how there is no level playing field? And how your 2 lakh crore is liquidated without you are even raising a murmur about it? Go back to the reason that India is again the only country where you can sell share. Kitne? 20%, 30% of the equity of the company without having them. And then you you also are the only country where shares are not eligible for finance. And you are made to pay 60%. I think smugglers in this country will get money at 30%. Also. India is the only country where shares are considered not a good productive asset for lending. As well in the, even in the banks, they can give you money against receivables. Against bad debts, they will finance it. I have a due respect to Mr. Rai who is here. How can you say share is not a good financeable commodity? Elsewhere in the world it is. Why it is not in this country? <laughs> so what you are doing in effect, you are choking the buyers and you are rewarding the sellers. And this is not just the one difference I am saying. Even our stock exchange does not recognize share as an acceptable security. Who in the world will recognize it? If I send shares as a margin, it is not... Okay, you may say today is not a right forum, but I am trying to give you reasons why market is falling after such a good budget. So question is not whether budget is good or bad. The question is why markets behave the way they are and why these pain behaviors are there, which from some of the so-called very intelligent people also don't understand. The reasons are nowhere else to see than the last street. Come along and travel with me. How there is an imbalance? Five or ten persons can rule the nation to the other way around also. There are liquidators of wealth who liquidate your wealth by hammering 20-30% of the equity. Has it happened first time? It has happened several times. Now, I was just talking about imbalance or disequilibrium on the front of interest and financing. Why elsewhere in the world, when you are talking about global, that you are saying that 3 lakh takkai loan will be Is there any protest? My dear Dinesh Bhai, I am telling you, 1928 and today it is 1992. I am there with you, I am not criticizing. We have to take up a cause of the investors that they are made to, if suppose they want to buy a house or they want to marry their daughter, they have to sell the shares. Why? Whether or not they like it. What is so bad about raising money? Why do you say every investor who raises money against stock is a speculator? Why don't we create liquidity? Why does the liquidity come only through selling? Why this forced selling takes place? Who is going to look after your right? If you do not wake up, I am saying please wake up. And now I will come to further steps. I was talking about lending. Now money is available at 8% in interbank market. And in stock exchange it is available at 60%. Do you see the disparity? How? how walls are uh, erected, how regulations are there. Just because there is one artificial wall, that money from this side will not go to that side. And 8 percent, UTI cannot deploy money in the call market. Just because the capital market is untouchable, 
even if 50 percent return in Barla is available, they will not allow it to happen because it is financing of bulls. I am not here to take up the cause of the bull and bear. They are a necessary integral part of the market. I am not against speculation. I am saying there should be even the hedging facility to everyone who is an investor. I was talking only about imbalance. I am not riding with anybody. Now the imbalance about information. Now tell me how many of you know that it is so easy to break the market. It is so easy to spread the rumor. It is so easy to bring down a stock from 150 within 5 minutes in two streets, the last street and the next one, you can hammer down because all of us are gripped by fear very quickly. You may not be taken away by that Karnataka ball bearing. You may still take 5 minutes, but you will take half a minute to decide yourself, decision, if somebody is playing on your fear. And mind you, we are first time investors, 5 crore of them, they are lacking in conviction because they are first timers and there are methods and techniques used on them so that they are scared into selling their stocks. And that is why Talakshi Bhai has to say, please do not sell. Please use your sanity, please use your own conscience, the budget is not bad. Because some people have chosen to hammer down the market, you will be made to sell, they will quietly buy, they will make a certain profit, you will make a certain loss. If the equation is yours, you wake it up or forget it. You will keep allowing yourself to be used by these techniques. Whereas to take up the market, it has happened in money market also. I can tell you to spread fear takes very little time. To plant greed, if that is the driving force to buy, takes much longer time. And then there is a disequilibrium. Look at the board. Every now and then you will find the whole system is so designed that there is no check. I am saying you are orphan. I can tell you there are so many agencies, so many regulations. Has anybody come, uh, come forward and taken up your cause? And that is why you have to spend 10 rupees. I will tell you how to spend it all. First of all, 5,000 of you are here. You are going to resolve that your earning and your wealth is very hard earned. Can you uh, disagree with me? Is it a wealth that you are going to pretend it away for somebody who wants to play on you? So first resolve that who is going to protect your wealth is your own self. And how do you do it? Maybe individually you, you wait for some harshest matter to come. I don't agree with it. You don't need a harshest matter. You are yourself harshest matter. You protect. How many times you have taken out a morcha? Talakshi Bhai was talking about 300 rupees rise and 3000 rupees demand. They go and take out a morcha. How many of you have ever gathered at Sachiwala? Even in thousands of rupees are gone away. How many of you have ever told Mr. G.V. Ramakrishna that we are under your custody and see to it that there is no bare hammering? How many of you? There is no one bothered by you. So you take up your own issue, my dear friend. You take out that 10 rupees, go to the telegraph office. If you cannot personally go, flood the authorities with 15 pesos of postcards. The price I think of postcards has not changed. <laughs> if you can't physically go, raise your issues that somebody is hammering down in wealth. Is your, your wealth is melting. 2 lakh crores. That 1600 was a false move. It happened in 3 and a half months. They said it was a wrong move. How in another 6 months that 1600 became the bottom? I am pure fundamentalist more than anything, but on my 10 year uh, career I can tell you I have gone through thousands of balance sheets, I am not professing much, but I came to this conclusion that fundamentals plus sentiment and therefore the sentiment has to be built up. And for that building up of sentiment, you have to see who are the people who are affecting that sentiment. Creation of wealth for investor is not bad, it will translate into a vibrant economy in certain times and we sell, we see everybody prophesizing. I mean, have you seen RBI governor ever telling you at uh, 800 and something that the index is very low, please buy. If he does that, he is very right in saying that 4,500 market is overheated. Is anybody signaling you when the market is underheated? Nobody does that. Why? They are there to scare you. They are not there to advise you that their level is low. 
those who are not supposed to advise will also advise. My dear friends, I am trying to tell you, I am not justifying 4,500, I am not justifying 800. I am justifying how the mechanism of the whole regulatory framework works, where they are there to scare you and not encourage you. They are there to stop you rather than taking our equity promotion work or equity card promotion. Now look at the budget also. I, I, last year I said that uh, people will stop giving any jokes on Sadarji because Mr. Manmohan Singh, our Dr. Manmohan Singh has really done a yeoman service. In the last three years we have seen a fundamental change in the Last year he said equity was a productive asset. Why he has developed cold feet this time? If he can give 4,000 crore, and today, the other day, they were saying it on TV, by the time we came to the point of corporate taxation, we saw that our coffers are empty. Can't you even spare? You know how much is collected by way of taxation on dividend? Sometimes about 80 crore. You think they don't have 80 crore, or they don't have a desire to do something for the investor? If you have 5,000 crore, and you don't have 80 crore for the investor, and, and what, what role are you playing? You are the risk taker on whose back every management comes and sucks you and takes the risk capital from you and maybe give you a, a dividend after 5-10 years. Who takes the risk? Yeah. So what, what, what is it that is coming as a big favor? What is the shortage in this country? There is excess debt. There is acute shortage of capital. There is 22% saving rate and there is 2% of the population coming to in, uh, invest in the stock exchange. And who is the major beneficiary? And 80 crore if you part, whom are you giving it? To your own institutions who are holding roughly 30 to 40% of the equity, to your own mutual fund, to your own equity which is nothing but a junk and the day you are going to place it, starting from 256 companies they have, now they have just chosen 30 companies for which they think they have a value to give to the investor and therefore they are going to place that paper on you. And why should you carry the burden if the government doesn't have any crore for you? So, one year there is blow hot, another year there is blow cold. And not for nothing people get disheartened. Because people expect, and it is a reasonable expectation, 80 crore is not a very large sum. Look at surcharge could have been done away with. Now, the, the day budget came, Dr. Manmohan Singh was asked the question, why the markets have gone down. He says, I have taken care of the fundamentals and I am sure investors will understand those fundamentals over a course of period and the health of the corporate body will get reflected in the performance and investors will be shrewd enough to understand. That means you want to leave it to itself rather than playing an active role of promotion of equity cult. 15,000 crore has been raised. They, you know the sum that they want. 38,000 crore is the interest burden each year that all of us are bearing. Another two years we will be 50,000 crore. And that would make 45% of your total revenue. And you are already borrowing just to repay pay the interest, you know, leave aside the principal. To that extent, more than our head we have borrowed internally. We have yet to default because there is nothing like pledging gold to honor your local debt. We have just faced that reality as far as external that is concerned. So why not do something for the investors? Why not create capital? Why not invite risk capital? Use that base of 5,000 of us and 5 crore of us elsewhere in the country to build up. And build up a base where you can raise 30, 40,000 crore annually and change the whole profile of debt equity mix. Well, I think this is where the budget has been lacking. It is good, it is bold, it reads well along with the first two ones, but when it comes to investors, definitely it is lacking. And for nothing is lost, I can tell you again, nothing is lost if we take care of this disequilibrium between bulls and bears. And that is where all of us have to resolve today, first to get the membership in uh, shareholders association, secondly, we have to find out a forum, we can take our mocha. Thirdly, Delhi is really very far off. 
the bureaucrats have never understood the investors, the bureaucrats have never understood the markets and therefore it is we who have to take up our cause, not sending very long memorandums. You know, the whole solution is one line. I, I am not talking here of any theory. I say, you can freely sell the share, do not pay interest on it. How to do? If you want to sell the shares in the forward account, you give the distinctive number. That's all that needs to be done. If you give a distinctive number, you may not deliver. Just one line solution I can tell you, my friends here will approve that 4500 index was right and the sentiment will automatically take care because we are rewarding the 3 and 5 percent of the community and in fact some of them are my friends and I would like to even request them. Of course, uh, Sri Amanda Kothari was not here. I wish I would have uh, even clearly advised that the pleasure of seeing people make money is much, much greater than the pleasure, the pleasure that you get out of creating a beer psychosis in the market and seeing some people liquidating their wealth and you amassing wealth. Now, again, I'm uh, talking about level playing field. You check up with the records of income tax department, how many bears have been raided? You will hear me. How many bears? I am telling you, you go and it is verifiable by record. And I dare and I give a challenge to any and everybody. How many bears in this country? You, you can see the bulls are singled out. One after another, they are a uh, center of. And, and, and it doesn't matter. Today, uh, maybe we will bear it. I am telling you honestly, we will bear it. We are planning to get back and we will. Rakesh Junjunwala, who is G.S. Damani, who is all these people you must know. And drop a polite letter. I am telling you, drop a polite letter. I am not one. I am Gandhiji myself also in that respect. Go and tell them, please dear sir, excess is not going to help beyond the point. Please do not rape us. That's all you have to say. And I'll tell you, 20 letters will go. Maybe it will have an impact. 500 letters will go, 5,000 letters will go, and all of us together, you don't know the mind that we have, is enormous. And then let us play. It is there on the ring. There has to be bulls, there have to be bears, there can be option trading also. But there should be no reward for an unproductive activity. We are on a dead wish, otherwise, I can tell you. To wait for somebody else to take up the market so that I gain is not going to work. We have to act ourselves. We have a lot of people who keep easily poisoning our minds about peace. I can have one hour debate here. If all of you are willing, with any and everybody, Jap Japanese economy, there was peace running together 40, 50 uh, P for years together. And temporarily, even if peas have gone up, whose benefit is it? Investor one, but more importantly, the corporate sector. And that is why Harjit used to say that 3,000, 2,500 ACC is, is definitely higher price than 10,000 ACC. Because at 10,000, you can replace 7.5 million capacity with equity addition of just 55 crore. What's that? So, I would like to conclude that we are on a dead fish if we do not act, do not protect our wealth, do not request Dinesh Bhai to permanently take up our cause. I will not leave it to advising. Personally, I feel I am dedicating myself. Any help, anything that we can do, Dinesh Bhai, I am going to be in touch with you. And please, for God's sake, people have to sell, there has to be contrary view. But just create a level playing field. Just see that there is no inbuilt mechanism in the system where the favor is given to one section to the disadvantage not of the bulls but also the investors. And you recognize the right side and the right people. That's about all. I have nothing much to say. To
and this is exactly what I told when somebody asked me after the budget and I told when as long as there are terrorists in the market, market will not go up.
The stock market has a better attraction than men probably. B, it's far more lucrative to look at the stock market than the kitchen. But here we had a little while ago, where he's still here, some of about seven years, and I'm so intrigued to find that the staff were young in the stock market. You could have brought more friends with you. Uh, I won't take more of your time, but I'm worshiping nothing. For the simple reason, I think time is running out. The last train may go home, and you want this meta, and you want it long. You don't want it for the short of time. And I think I would like to come between you and him. All I'd like to make is three points, not really on what you should buy, what you should not buy. Because I had from today's very a letter, which I saw this morning after a return of uh, three days, asking me to, but he said what each of the speakers was supposed to do, and there were five things that he wanted from each of us. First was the perception of the market in the next, what is it, four weeks, four months, and 18 months. Number two, one of the friendly proposals, the unfavorable proposals, the effect of the above proposals, mention the item two, etc. Forecast the battle move the BAC index, and scripts not more than 10. I'm the least qualified to answer any of these questions, very honestly, ladies and gentlemen. I don't, in my name, in my family's name, I don't own companies, hold a single script of any company, either in India or internationally. I add this word internationally because it's the word of the the problem. So, A, I've never bought shares in the market, not that I think it's, a good, it's not a good thing to do. I'm a strong broker of the Bombay Stock Exchange, which is not disclosed to them for the simple reason. I have never practiced as a stockbroker. I bought my membership tickets in 1981, when the price of a ticket then was 65,000 rupees. In the year of 1993, I believe I never tried evaluation. If I do, the income tax will probably come up three tomorrow morning. I don't know about that car. I believe it's been one of my best investments. I get in cash it, I probably will have over in that door. Over the time, I said I want to sell this. And everybody says, wait, you'll make more money. I waited. I waited at 25 lakhs, I waited at 50 lakhs, I waited at 75 lakhs. At a crore, I said, I think this is good. Probably I can retire in a little place, take life easy, read the economic times, and keep following the market because I don't have to worry about the market. I've just been told, don't sell it. What does it mean? Hold out your good stocks, you'll never go wrong, I think. Including the membership of the market. Second thing is, the market, in fact, is the most progressive, stock market is the most progressive place in this country. We have one single problem in this country, is we live in history. We live from the time when Ashoka was the king of this country. We look at the glory of Mahatma Gandhi, we look at the glory of Lord Buddha, I mean, there are 5,000 such names, and we blame it on the British for everything that went wrong in this country. The fear of even the colonial rule. Look what they've done to us. 47 years we've got after the British went back to the country. They are not going to come and help us around the country. We have a right ourselves. Stock market, and I said, you can't change history. You can't rewrite history. It has happened if it's yesterday. Tomorrow is another day. It can be a very wonderful day. What you have to do is, you have to make the tomorrow. You have, and the stock market is the only place which doesn't go by history. Fundamental rules is based on balance sheet, history. Balance sheet doesn't have a story. It has only numbers. This is what Mr. Mehta said. That analysis is fine, fundamentals is fine, sentiment comes in the way. I don't think you're able to choose your life's partner by looking at a photograph. You want to see her. The photograph conveys what she or she looks like. When you meet the person, you really know whether you can get along or not. That is what is very important. That soul comes in when you look at the sentiment part of it. And the market runs on two emotions, greed and fear. The greed comes in when there's the not popular about the whole face. Nobody is just and says, I'm told it's about 20,000, I'll say exactly 18,000. And then, Kalakshi by theory comes 50 50. You can't go around that. <laughs> Either way, you win. Number two is the fear. In a falling market, everybody wants to exist. Like the Sashin Mehta said, it takes one minute for people to sell shares on a rumor that the market is crashing or a script is going down. And you correctly said, it takes a long while for a man to say, to make a buy decision. The sell decision is different from a buy decision. And very rightly some of them said that make up your mind, be analytical yourself. You may not have all the tools. Go to the people who have the correct tools. Let me ask you a question. How many of you trust your broker at 5 fingers going up or 10 fingers going down? Why? 
Every one of those doctors, doctors has said, you, you do what he tells you to do. You go to them, I have an extra offer. He says, take this and you do it blindly. Probably won't go and check with the other doctors. You go to your lawyer, you go to your solicitor. Why? Because you believe he knows the subject better. He says, do this, write this letter, answer the letter with the notice accordingly. You do that. You don't go to the second lawyer or the third lawyer or the tenth lawyer for that. Do you know that to be a stockbroker? No. Select a stockbroker. Look at a profession. Look at what you think you trust. After having trusted him, don't question him every third minute. Why did you buy this trip? Why did you do this? Why did you think? Change it once and for all. But select one and stay put. Trust him and leave it to his judgment. If you believe it's good, I'm sure he's telling you what is good for you. Because what is good for you is ultimately good for him. He doesn't have to advertise to get his business. You are his biggest big person. You say that this gentleman, this firm is professional. They know what to tell us. They know when to tell us to do what. This is something very important for all of us. And I think probably there are very few people who go by the stockbroker's advice at one shot. Well, there are quite a few, but very few in competitive profession. They probably talk with four. Believe me, you're going to make mistakes, you're going to be confused, because you have four different opinions on the same script. How are you going to take my your mind? It's very difficult to do that. Uh, this is part of what I call the education program or the learning curve. I have seen Mr. Meta making various notes. In fact, for the last two and a half hours, or almost two hours now, two hours in here, he's probably minus in working at where will it be? Let me the part 10 minutes it takes on making the note. I try to look at it, but he writes it so well, I don't know what is written there. <laughs> he writes it in a manner, he's prepared and I know the light is. I gave it up. I don't know if I probably, you know, taken a couple of secrets and told you about anything. I'm going to credit for it. Having said this, the budget is what we were supposed to talk about. As Mr. Bosa said, the other side can't come out. They did not say about the budget. It's printed, it's written, it's analyzed, it's discussed, abused, good, bad. I think we've seen, as somebody said earlier, 47 budgets. And I think the last few years have been good. If you have confidence in this country, if you have confidence in the way things are like to move, and more important, if you have confidence in yourself, I think you can't go wrong in the long term if you're an investor. The biggest problem today is everybody wants to make money. In probably a gap of 10 days. I had this told to me by friends saying, Can you give us a good tip? I said, I don't give tips because it's dangerous. Or oh, no, no, tell us what we need to buy. You come out and say, I think X is good at this price level. Say, it's fair. I, I like them young. I mean, young means, don't misunderstand me in terms of young because everybody's got a one track mind when he talked about whatever Mr. Gosha said. I like scripts to young, no class, because age. For an average small investor, the risk-bearing capacity is limited. You probably can buy for 50,000 rupees that you have. X number of shares which are valued at, let's say, 20 rupees each, but you can't buy two and the other. Leave it to the big guys. You try and do what you have with your market. Because A, the market will be lower. B, it can appreciate much faster in terms of percentage, and you can turn it around another time it comes. Go back and check if somebody is ready to do it. But they come and say, oh, it's going to double in what? 15 months time, 12 months time, that's too long. I said, look, it can happen 6 to 8 months time, but I'm giving you a time frame you know, to be on the safe side. You'll be pay safe longer. It's not going to be bad if it happens in 10 days time. So how can it happen in 10 days time? It's a better step. Buy for me on a Monday what you think is good. Sell it on a Friday and send the check for the difference. What he means is, you do all the thinking, you implement it, take all the risks and send me the box. Then you know, I was so good at the subject, I made the money myself. Why should I do everything for you and send you a check, a gift every week? That's exactly what happened. The great part of the trade industry. I think one has to be dispassionate about that. We also have a very high sense of possession in this country, especially Indians. We don't send our gold. I can challenge every female here, if I said, what's your gold at 300 rupees of stone, I ask one of them, I don't know the price of gold because I don't feel like buying it. I think the stock market is a better place than a piece of gold. Honestly, I think it's going to be bigger in the long run. How many of you have in your world if it appreciates by 10 times in 5 years? I don't see anything that's going down. That sense of possession. Security is what you think. You probably sell your shares with the double tomorrow morning. Why? Because that's, that's not a goal. You want to give it to your daughter, your children, your 
lot of other things. Fine, I'm not questioning the fact that there is any high interest rates. It also happens in the stock market. If a company is going down, or if you feel that your broker says it's like good sale at this price, you say, but I don't need the money. What should I say next? If you don't need the money, fine. Take it, put it to something else. That will do better than this one. Turn it around, because, and get someone to do it for you if you can't do it yourself. Uh, at this, I think I wouldn't like to go further into the subject, but uh, I'd like to end you with one thing. Please have confidence in yourself when you're in the stock market. Don't expect miracles, except that they come your way. Don't expect to get money and doubling your profits every 10 days. Phases will come, phases will go. Booms and busts, whatever they are, supposed to be highs and lows have come and gone. The analysis given by almost here, everybody here made a tremendous amount of sense. I will use indexes. And I think index is not the only relevant book. Index consists of X number of companies. And you can't have only those shares. I think bulk of you sitting here could have entered the stock market first to the primary market. It's easier to do. You don't need a broker to do it for you. You'll fill up a form, write a check and give it. And slowly you enter. Because I've seen this in the what they call the fair up dilution days of the 70s. I think the number of populations went up from about 2.2 million that is going to lakhs in the mid-70s what is 5 crores today. I think almost 40% of this additional incremental number came during the paradigm of case. Why? You got a Colgate at 25. You are right for it. You got a Pachani at 16. You got a Cadbury at something similar like that. Why? Because it was priced by somebody for you. You could go wrong. You got it. You picked it up. That's how you entered the market. Having entered that stage, do you think you got wrong in those shares? We haven't gone wrong probably. It's done well over the time. Keep that at the back of your mind. Do it, and I don't think you'll go wrong in the years. Thank you very much. that uh, Mr. Modi liked us to, wanted us to look at. 
in the short term, I think in four to six weeks, we should expect the market to be bad because of expectations of poor results for March. The poor results should be as a result not only of the recessionary trends in the economy but also because of the loss of production and sales in December and January. We cannot expect that many companies will report very good performances from March. So for the immediate next four to six weeks, we should expect a weak market. In the medium term, over a period of four to six months, I feel fairly confident that the market should bottom out and commence a recovery. The important reason for this would be FII investment flow. Foreign investment institutions have shown considerable interest in the country. If they have a problem, it seems to be a problem of lack of availability of stocks rather than uh, lack of interest in stocks. But they are getting geared and I think over the next four to six months we will see some activity from them. The other reason we should see the market pick up is uh, better corporate performances expected in September because of the various duty reliefs and uh, the interest cost reduction which should improve corporate profits. Over the long term, after one year, we must expect a strong recovery in the market as companies start showing results on the funds that have been collected in the current year and in the last year and also a massive inflow of funds from foreign investment institutions because there has been only one area where the government has given incentive for investment there is a 30% rate for short term capital gains for FII this is comparable to what is available in the Pacific Ring and what is available in the US for short term gains this should boost the short term sentiments of the, the long term sentiments of the market the most important reason why one can feel bullish about the market is that even at this stage and as things develop over the next one year, one can expect a number of companies to show better performances. And at the current prices that will be available, these companies have started looking very attractive to buy. Now you cannot have a market where there are a large number of commodities available at reasonable prices and overall traditions in the market. Today we have investment worthy skills in the market across various industries. If you look at pesticide, a stock like United Phosphorus should probably show 10 crores more profit just because of the benefits which have been affected to the budget. A company like Asia Brown Bowery should benefit because of the power sector incentives which have been given and there should be a large boost to demand from the power sector. <coughs> Companies like Indian Dice of Industries where round trip costs have virtually come crashing down and in export demand is very attractive for these companies. Small companies like Prestige Poly Containers, which buy SDPE and 65% of the turnover comes in SDPE cost, should benefit substantially because SDPE, which they are buying at 60 rupees a kilo, is now available at 45 rupees a kilo. So there should be benefit for them. A large company like Reliance Industries, which makes about 350,000 tons of plastics, has been able to reduce prices by 7.5% and become more uh, competitive with imports. Already they were competitive with imports. I think they should benefit in a very big way. A company like Lacme which uh, was competing with SSI units primarily because it was paying a hell of a lot of excise whereas SSI units were not paying excise should benefit very substantially companies like Asian Paints should benefit very largely because of drop in orthocellin prices resulting in drop in salic anhydride prices allowing them to reduce the price of their products and boost demand Wokart which made an issue recently I think will probably announce better results than what was projected in their prospectus making it a very attractive price, available at 20 rupees cheaper than the issue price of the company. I think companies like uh, East India Hotels and other hotel companies, we can go on and on. There are a large number of companies that have benefited as a result of the budget. These benefits will probably show in September 1993 and in March 1994. All that we need is for someone to come and buy those shares. I think that time will come from the form of FII institution. And once that comes, the confidence of the investors and the sentiment factor that you are talking about will also be restored and we could expect a fairly bullish market in 1994. I'll leave this door
of memory and memory. Mr. Koshi, give it present to Mr. Talanshi Bai. Thank you. 
पत्रिका का नियम जो कंट्रोल में आई थी आई सेड व्हाट इज सो ग्रेट ही सेड आई फाउंड आउट सम वे वेयर यू डोंट हैव टू पे टैक्सेस आई हैव टू सी दिस गाइड इन रिगार्डिंग द आफ्टर यू एंड क्लेमिंग सम 11 12000 करोड़ यू विल बी रिलीव्ड ऑफ ऑल दिस थिंग्स एंड आई वाज क्वाइट क्यूरियस टू नो व्हाट इट इज He said the effect is like you are in a Cayman Island. You don't have to pay any taxes. And I asked him, why, after all, why don't you make, why you are making it so mysterious? What is so great thing? He said one thing you have to just stop. You have to observe something. I said, what is it? He said, stop earning. <laughs> so if you don't earn, so there won't be any income left. I said, wow, really great. And I thought of really following it. friends i had crossed all my imagination levels for myself and it is a human nature and especially ambitious person like me to look for bigger and bigger challenges at one point of time there were challenges to achieve make money for yourself then to make money in much bigger numbers then to become or come on the board of some companies then what then i thought now let's work on the national finances finances on the investors where you can talk of 50000 crore and where you can talk of 2 lakh crores <coughs> so i said how to start this exercise you really want to start Where do I start? And then came the budget. Unfortunately, I don't hold any of those degrees, which we, which makes me do. Come in. By whatever I could understand. whatever i could be this has been a very very creative budget it has been it has taken one of the biggest problem which our country was facing last 18 months or especially last one year that is of the mind recession Cutting various excise duties and import duty reduction will definitely bring in better industrialization, better uh, environment. But where things went wrong, especially from the capital market point of view, so I feel that I am more from the capital market than to talk. it was the imbalance created between the demand and supply last one year if you try and analyze on one side as if there is not going to be any tomorrow almost all corporates and governments started raising resources from this market really unprecedented demand came on the funds from the market on the other side suddenly all the areas or avenues of the finance coming to the market was shown so big gap suddenly was created on one side substantial supply demand of money came in in a very big number and on the other side total supply was overnight short without going into the details of it then what happened in this budget people started expecting 15 days back 
environment was getting created that our honorable finance minister will see to it that better environment is created environment to invite substantial savings which we have towards the productive purposes as last year we mentioned that equity is a productive asset and as you know there is no shape or size of expectation same way people started looking towards that the process of creating an environment to get on and there came a blow industry and capital market plays a complementary role to each other there cannot be low sided approach when you try to make industry healthy but you don't create and warmth at the capital market for savings to go towards they have and the government could analyze that yes capital market is one place which can offer tremendous opportunity for raising resources in this budget also if you see 3500 crores of bsc placement is worked out for the also they have not been able to place last year's balances not only that they have also suggested good banks to go and raise resources from the capital market how can the capital market can sustain its burden unless you try and open it up unless even you try and say that we are concerned about it right somebody uh, mr right suggested that 10% change in the corporate tax may not make much of a difference in the financial but it helps that yes government is concerned about the investors it shows its consciousness it shows it that the one who is investing money in this corporate corporate are entitled for better return and as ashwin has rightly analyzed that stock market is just not the data or just not the science it is a mixture of science and art together the art is what which is related to your pd which is where you your sentiment part comes in. that's why it is not 10% reduction in financial term but that 10% of 500 crores was released for the investors of saver would have allowed the government to raise 10000 crore more than what they have something i would like to bring out our most eminent personality mr pasiwala what he has said i do not find single reason for not raising the income tax threshold limit except the government greed and there should be a country wide education against it god <laughs> our finance minister making some promises why can't we fulfill it isn't we eligible for building up expectations of what he has said he has committed last year and this is what has happened it is not 10% or it is not few crores it is the betrayal of the trust all these investors had in the finance minister it is reflected in the capital market and ashwin also rightly said that nobody takes care of your interest you are destitute and you are orphaned unless you take care of your own self. think of those farmers even when there was a news in air that there will be a cut in farmer subsidy what how where was even not known 
but you have seen the rally going in Delhi and farmers shouting for their rights. But here, 1.5 lakh crore diluted, no problem. Your money goes green, find the reason, probably it was Harshad Mehta or probably this and forget about it. कुछ नहीं तो वही सट्टा किया था दिमाग ऐसा हाथ में रख लिया और क्या है? You are investors. Where is the speculation part of it? And I think I will be repeating again. If 3,000 crore was project, some industrialist had to put in. He brings in 50 crores of his own. And 2,950 crore he borrows for the industrial project which is going to come with the profitability after five years. Is a creation, is a creative activity in this country. But somebody who is forecasting that just after five months this company is going to do well, but he is borrowing a part of his money to buy those shares is speculative. Why can't we get out of this? Speculative and speculation. Our life itself is a speculation whether we are going to breathe the next moment or not. It's not known. What is the solution? We all have problems. We can always suggest our problems. And I don't think anybody is just interested in hearing problems only. One simple solution. I am today a salesman to make you all a member of Bombay Shareholder Association. <laughs> Let their resolutions be passed. Let Dinesh Bhai take up the cause on your behalf to write to the finance minister that this many people look towards this all benefit which has been promised and you want us to subscribe to your capital, please create an environment. There will be a little bit of repetition also, as Ashwin was suggesting that our stocks are not at all taken as a asset. In this country, we can get money on the promises or signing of promissory notes, but we don't get on the actual assets, that is equity. Okay, I mean the reason comes that we can't afford <coughs> to divert our resources to speculative purposes when we are financing equity, it is a speculative purpose. Don't do it. I agree that yes, really, according to your standards, financing or offering finances towards equity may be a speculative purpose open the doors for us to go to the foreign bankers abroad and let us borrow money against that. That's not going to touch your resources in this country. We will be able to bring the FI, we will be able to bring the money. Make it free. Create an environment for them to come and finance our equity. Let them be a lender. Not only create an environment for to come in as an investor, let the lenders also come in. If you can't trust, you don't expect them to trust your companies and your stock exchanges. Once they come in as a lender, very well they can become an investor tomorrow. We have seen what has happened in Argentina. There, the inflation rate has come down from 2000 and odd percentage to just 17 and half percent. On making a free environment for anybody to come in and buy whatever they want, especially stocks. PSU stocks have been diluted. Not only that, they said, okay, you can't come in as an investor, we are prepared to guarantee your return. But do come, we are making and we are creating an environment for you. And that's the way the finances of this country of this country are changed. See what happens.
in the budget speech. I was shocked reading it today. In the budget speech, uh, our finance ministry says that dollar will get stabilized at 28. And all the calculations are made according that it will be stabilizing at 28. What is the act? You don't have the conviction, you go and buy dollar today, 300 million dollars when it is trying to come, and come down at 31.90. What is the justification? You don't trust your country, country's rupee. Don't allow it to come down. Just few days back when you have said that it is going to come down to 28, how can you make it to stop at 30, 31.90 or 32? Are we going to manage situations this way? Are we going to create, I understand that the life is mixed of performance and perception. We call it a water and gold theory. Gold has got no performance value, but still because of a very strong perception and security value attached to it, we are always prepared to pay the price. Simultaneously, you can't live without water. A glass of water, you can't just live for a day. But still, if somebody asks you for two rupees at last, you say, don't be stupid. That is the difference. It's not the performance, it is the perception has been making the price of this commodity. And that remains true in the stock market. That also remains true for the various commodity <coughs> market. The distortion, it's not only government, as I should mention, it will be reputation. I read three days back that Morgan Stanley has assessed and they say that corporate earnings of this country will go by 35% and it is a good investment opportunity. I was feeling pretty about their research, although very well managed. Because the research of few people here who have found out that without investing resources, you get the return of 35 to 70 percent in a more secured manner. Go short. <laughs> Morgan Stanley needs to deploy resources and may or may not, but here is a certain system which puts you at par with the financer. Why can't we look into this system? SEBI has made few rules. Somebody who buys 5% of the stock should declare that he has bought 5% of stock. If he buys 10% of stock, then he has to offer the same opportunity to almost all the investors to create the balance. <coughs> What happens to a person who goes short for 20%? Is he offering the same opportunity to everybody? <laughs> and every not any share can go even short. There has been instances that a company has issued 60 lakh shares and the short sale is of more than 30 lakh shares. <laughs> Unrestricted. No check. And this has been brought out to SEBI not now, long back. It's not that this anomaly only in the system. Also, look at that how this feeling is for the harness. If you continuously look at the margin system, which will clearly tell you that you have a special privilege if you go short. Margin levels are comparatively always lower than the margin of the Sorry, although I am known as big bull, but I am not wanting to talk just because I am a bull. I am trying to bring out some facts which this distortion is the distortion which is playing havoc on your money, on your assets. Somebody who wants to buy has to have the finances. Somebody who wants to sell, he did not, he did not have anything. <coughs> and no check. 
So that is the second resolution we need to. The solution is that let Dinesh Bhai take up. That we all resolve that they should be brought up to Chevy that they have to take <laughs> this.
very slow, you will make money. He did not dare to ask me, के सत्तु क्या नहीं करवाए?